grading the fit. It's useful to have a standardized grading scheme when fitting RGP contact lenses. If you have to pass a patient on to a colleague or have to come back another day, accurately recording how things were fitting can help with your decision-making process. Here we'll go through a scheme developed by the GP Consensus Group and Wolfson et al. With this, you will be able to standardize your notation of RGP fitting across four categories. These are comfort, centration, movement, and fluorescein fitting pattern. Before grading the fit, it is recommended to let the lens settle for up to 20 minutes. This helps to reduce the reflex tearing of a patient, which otherwise could give a false fitting pattern. The first step is to instill fluorescein so you can later assess and record the fluorescein fitting pattern at the optimum time, which is between 30 seconds and 3 minutes afterwards. Next, record the manufacturer, brand, and lens parameters for the lens you are grading. Comfort. The scheme suggests asking the patient to rate their comfort on a scale where 0 is poor and 4 is a perfect lens. Comfort is subjective and can be a tricky thing to measure, especially if you're assessing subsequent lenses. An angry eye can give you a less favorable comfort review score. Centration. Here's a set of notations that can be used to grade centration. These are L for lens crosses the limbus during blink, P for optic zone boundary enters pupil in low light, X for diameter too small, optic zone not covering pupil in between blinks. If none of these issues are present, you can use C for adequately centered. Movement. After a blink, the lens should move a little. The ideal amount is between 1 and 1.5 millimeters. For this scale, that would be recorded as a zero. Plus one is between 1.6 and two millimeters of movement. Plus two is more than two millimeters. Minus one is between 0.5 and 0.9 millimeters. And minus two would be less than 0.5 millimeters of movement. You can use a slit lamp beam to discern how much movement there is. Reduce the slit beam width to 2 mm and rotate the beam to horizontal. You can then use this as a scale to help you judge lens movement on blink. Here we have some examples of the lens moving. This lens moves too much. This is a plus 2, denoting that it moves more than 2 mm with each blink. This is the optimal amount of movement. You can see the lens moves between 1 and 1.5 mm each blink. Fluorescein fitting pattern. Viewing the post lens fluorescein pattern, you can assess the alignment of the lens with the cornea. The central 7 mm or so should exhibit a thin film of fluorescein, followed by a mid peripheral area of light bearing, therefore thinning of the fluorescein pattern. The edge should show a bright area of fluorescein where the lens lifts off the cornea, aiding in lens removal and tear exchange. Make a judgment for central, mid peripheral, and edge fit separately. In addition, for a toric fit, do this in both the horizontal and vertical meridian. Similar to movement, this is on a plus one to minus two scale, with zero being perfect. Plus two is where you have a bright fluorescein pattern indicating a thick post lens tear layer, and minus two would indicate corneal touch, also known as bearing. In the central zone, this lens is aligned nicely with the cornea and would be considered a zero. This lens is a plus two, as you can see, the fluorescein is very bright centrally. The lens is steep. This example is a minus one. As you can see, there is light central touch. This lens is flat. Let's put this all together and look over a few lenses. If we apply the GP consensus group method to our flat and steep fitting lenses, we can see here that a steep fitting lens has good centration. So we'll mark that as C. The comfort from the patient wasn't perfect, but was relatively good, so we'll mark that as 3. If we look at the vertical and horizontal fluorescein pattern centrally, we can mark this as plus 2 because it's quite bright. Mid peripherally, there's touch, so we'll mark that as minus 2. The edge band is thin, so we can mark that as 0. Movement in this case would be marked as minus 1 as the lens did move, but only by approximately a millimeter. If we look at this flat fitting lens, we can see that the lens is poorly centered inferiorly and temporally. So in this case, we would mark the centration as L and P, indicating that it's crossing the limbus and the central optical zone is encroaching on the pupil margin. Comfort in this case is poor, we can mark that as one. And if we look at the vertical and the horizontal fluorescein pattern, centrally, we can see an area of touch, we can mark that as minus two. Mid peripherally, we can see an area of fluorescein pooling. In this case, the lens decentered. 
If we center the lens, we would get a concentric ring as opposed to the offset crescent. So the mid peripheral area could be marked as plus two. And we have a thick edge band of fluorescein, which we can mark as plus two. Movement of this lens was quite excessive, greater than two millimeters. And therefore we can mark the movement as plus two. This skills guide is adapted from original content by Drew Thompson. You can find his full CPD video, Soft and RGP Contact Lens Fitting Pearls, in the OT Education Library. You can find links to this in the description, as well as links to our other contact lens fitting skills guides.